Oh yes, welcome back to it, your Feel Good Breakfast show on a Tuesday morning where we're traveling to infinity and beyond with World Space Week. And of course, a recent discovery right here on home soil has put South Africa firmly on the final frontier of space exploration. Now, understandably so, we're always focused on what is happening on our small blue planet. We often forget that there is a massive universe out there and a lot of fascinating things going on in space all around us every day. We live in an era of unbelievable space discoveries, but one recent observation by the South African Large Telescope of a supermassive black hole that in many ways defies logic has got scientists across the world scratching their heads in Wonderment. Here is why. Just outside of Sutherland in the Northern Cape, Africa's giant eye on the universe is on a never-ending mission to help detect black holes. And every so often it finds something that quite literally defies imagination. Recently, researchers detected a supermassive black hole at the center of a newly found galaxy that's far bigger than current theories allow. Black holes are considered to be the most powerful and mysterious forces of the universe. And while all but the smallest galaxies in our universe are thought to harbor a black hole, what makes this one so unique is that it appears to be 30 times more massive than is expected for a galaxy of this size, with a gravitational force 350 million times more powerful than our Sun. So how did this happen? Researchers say it could be that the black hole just grew much faster than the galaxy surrounding it, or maybe the galaxy's growth was prematurely stopped. But scientists aren't sure whether this particular galaxy is just a fluke or whether they found a new class of galaxies. All we know for sure is what they found has blown away current theories about how galaxies evolve, proving that when it comes to our universe, we've barely begun to scratch the surface of what's really going on out there. Should we be excited? Should we be terrified? It is a little hard to say. Well, at the forefront of space discovery here on South African soil is the Astronomical Observatory. And with us in studio to unpack this mystery is Dr. Stephen Crawford. Doctor, welcome. Thank you, Grant. Um, I know I don't say welcome to South Africa. You've been here a while. You are very emotionally invested in what is going on. Let's start with this black hole. Should I be terrified? Should I be excited? Why is this making waves in the way that it is? Well, fortunately enough, the black hole is about 1.86 billion light years away from us. <laughs> so you can, you're quite safe in terms of it. But this is actually a really strange object. When we actually look at black holes and how they relate to the galaxies they're in, we find a very strong correlation between the masses of the black hole and the mass of the galaxy. This is one of the first black holes that we've ever discovered to not be on this correlation. And so it's far more massive than the galaxy it's appearing in. So what does this mean? Why has this got scientists so excited or to the degree that we are? Well, scientists are always excited whenever they find something different because that helps us explain the universe. And this black hole is actually so different than anything else we've seen before, it's hard to explain in our existing theories. Just by discovering it, we're gonna learn something new about the universe. Your immediate, obviously, a uh, couple of light bulbs must have gone off. What does this say to you as a scientist? What do you think this is going to reveal about our universe? Well, we've had a very difficult time even explaining the relationship itself. We believe galaxies grow through the merger of other galaxies, and that the black hole in the center of galaxies, uh, every galaxy has a supermassive black hole, which is typically uh, several million or 100 million times more massive than the sun that these black holes go through the accretion of gas and dust and other material which is falling into it. How these two processes link together isn't actually very well understood. And so this could actually potentially be a missing link to explain and be the exception to the rule to help us explain actually what the, how the physics relates to how a galaxy grows and how its central black hole grows. You know, I think we, we're running out of mysteries. You know, we think we, we run out of those new frontiers here on Earth. We're running out of those spaces on, um, in the universe. But it does say that we really are breaking new ground, which is amazing. Now, we know that Stephen Hawking has often used the analogy that a black hole could be a passageway into a parallel universe. Should we be thinking along those lines? Is this science fiction in your mind? Well, I would certainly not argue with Stephen Hawking. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and I think the, the exciting thing, at least about black holes for me, is that 
once we actually really get, even though there's lots of theories about them, we, and lots of great work that is being done to actually understand what actually happens with them, we still don't really know. And so these are still objects really enshrouded in mystery. And so saying exactly what happens when, once you get to the center of a black hole is very difficult to do. We'll leave that to Hollywood to hypothesize in their next big blockbuster. Now, of course, you've been working at SALT, the South African Large Telescope, doing incredible work. Big part of this discovery. What, what do you guys do there? What is it about your job there that excites you? Well, SALT is the largest telescope in the southern hemisphere. And so it's large optical collecting, large mirror, 11 meters across, gives a, a great opportunity to collect a lot of light from these very distant objects so that we can study them in fine detail. The main workhorse instrument on SALT is the Robert Stobie spectrograph, which is named after a former director of SALT. And it uses the light from different distant objects and breaks them up into individual wavelengths so we can study the objects in detail. And so we could observe hydrogen in this distant black hole and notice that because of the shape of the, the emission lines coming from this hydrogen gas, we're far broader than what we'd expect. And so it's by using the spectroscopy to measure the shape of emission lines that we can measure the motion of the gas around this very distant black hole to actually measure the mass of it. Oh man, and hopefully this inspires a new generation of young South Africans to embrace that challenge. I wish I was younger when I hear these things. <laughs> um, I do feel really old, but not as old as a black hole. So doctor, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Grant. And thank you for the work that you guys are doing. Please pass our best on to your team. We really are impressed. Thank you so much. Oh, so with so much still to discover about the universe and our place in it, how can it not make you feel alive? And if, like me, you are feeling old, remember there is a supermassive black hole out there that is well, around 9 billion years older than you are. Yeah, I think that should become a new hashtag, not as old as a black hole. Anyway, listen, um, as part of our celebration of World Space Week yesterday, we posted a question on our social media, uh, which said the following, how far away is the closest black hole to the Earth? Do you know the answer? Uh, yes, I do. Oh, you do? No, I don't. Okay, anyway, so uh, we had a couple of responses from you. Esther Tamiya said that the closest one is about 1,600 light years away from the Earth, while uh, Roshni Umruth said that 7,800 light years away is the nearest one, and then Kathleen Govinder said 6,000 light years away. Well, the truth about it is that nobody actually knows the exact number, but it is at least 2,000 light years away. And uh, I think you'll remember if you, look, if you look back in past reports that an erroneous me measurement of the black hole uh, led to a slew of news reports and a few years back saying that uh, the nearest black hole is just 1,600 light years away, which is not close enough to be considered dangerous, but way closer than we actually thought. But further research, however, shows that the black hole is likely further away, away than that, at least 2,000 light years away, because it takes light just eight minutes to travel from the sun to us. So 2,000 years traveling sure. at the speed of light is very, very far. And I just Googled it now. I looked for it, it blew my mind. One light year is 9,460 billion kilometers. That's far, bro. That's great. That's very far. Anyway, so that's, uh, I guess, the question of the day. But tomorrow, we'll be talking all about UFOs. How many UFO sightings are recorded in South Africa each week? That is our question. See, the, see whether you can answer that. <laughs> that's so crazy. But you know what isn't crazy is the fact that we're looking at um, the answers for uh, where in the world. Yeah. Did you at least know where that was? I had no... Well, when, when they gave the clues, I thought somewhere in Japan. Okay, well, we did post the picture up there, and of course, some of the clues was that it's the, the city is the largest in the South Pacific. It has an astounding 78 parks and is home to the popular inaugural rugby festival. Ooh. Now, a lot of people on social media said that it could be Fiji, maybe, because they see island vibes. But the correct answer that was gotten by Desiree, as well as Blackstone Yuri, as well as Zandro, is Suva. Congratulations in Fiji. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Yay. because Fiji's not a city. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a, it's a yes, country. Suva in Fiji. Fantastic. Have you been well there before? Then, you, I have not, that. but I need to go, though. Yeah, you've Maybe been saying now. you need to go on holiday. What's wrong with you? Why, okay, do you I think not I'm like just going here? to go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's time for us to take a very quick ad break. Stay tuned to your Feel Good Breakfast show. Well, actually, not an ad break. It's time for us to take a look at the news.